What's up? Good morning, guys. Last week, I posted on my Instagram a picture of me in downtown when we were out filming, asking you guys to post any questions that you've got about fitness, nutrition, training, health, supplementation, or anything that you want to know about me. Uh, you guys have been posting a ton of questions, so uh, today I'm going to walk around here, Venice in uh, Southern California, and pick out some of the best questions and uh, try and give you an insight and a good answer as to what you are. So uh, let's find out what you guys have been asking. First question here. This is by uh, CCVDM. He asks, uh, hey Rob, I got a question. Uh, what do you think about stretching? Is it best to do before the workout, during or after? Myself preferring stretching during the workout and was wondering about your thoughts on the subject. Uh, great question, because I brought this up last week during a, a little uh, sports massage and I asked this exact question. And the answer was a little bit of light stretching after a, a sort of a cardio warm up. So three, four, five minutes on the cardio machine some light stretching of that muscle group that you're gonna be training. Nothing too uh, intense, just holding it for about 15, 20 seconds, and then uh, warming it up to an actual uh, circuit of the exercises that you're typically uh, gonna be doing for that workout. And then again, at the end. So, uh, to summarize, no real deep, intense stretching, just a light stretch before and after. And also, if I throw in, um, I'll often do more of a stretch after some of the cardio, so not necessarily all the time that I'm weight training. Uh, there will be some separate times that I'm stretching, but uh, yeah, little cardio warm up, a light stretch before that training session, warm up the muscles through a circuit, and then again, just at the end with a little cool down. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question, uh, this is by Raccoon. Uh, how did you first start out your fitness journey and what was the reason behind it? Uh, okay, real simply, I was 14, I was big into mountain biking, had a little injury on my shoulder, needed to lift weights to kind of build up my strength. And uh, I was very fortunate that at the time our uh, family window cleaner was a world powerlifting champion. So uh, just by chance, I went down to the gym with him. I was interested in sort of the cover models on the, the men's health magazines. And uh, very early on, he showed me the sort of the main principles behind uh, weight training that would allow me to build up strength behind my shoulder. A lot of presses and flies and uh, you know, it just kind of took off from there. I really got into the weight training. I loved the, uh, the concept of being able to grow and develop my body. And then from there, learned about nutrition, got into competing and the rest they say is history. So it's, it's funny that it started from an injury. I think most people kind of get into weight training from that. And, and for me, from a young age, it just kind of took off with the, uh, the ability to transform myself through learning and applying my own knowledge. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my uh, story behind my fitness journey. Okay, here's a good one uh, from Big Sammy 610 Asks, uh, is fasted cardio more beneficial than traditional cardio? People have different opinions on this. My experience is I've always found that doing cardio fasted, meaning uh, without food and typically first thing in the morning, I find that uh, it, my body then uses fat as its preferred source of fuel, providing it's not too long. So typically for me, it'll be 45 minutes up to 60 minutes with uh, apps following early on in the morning. So from 7 a.m. in the morning, then I get my meal. There have been times where I eat and then do cardio, but I just feel that that works best for me later on in the day. So, you know, it, everyone's slightly different with their metabolism, but um, just from a scientific standpoint, uh, Fat is the preferred source of fuel for uh, sustained cardio. So unless you're doing more intense HIIT training, then you might want to have some food because it's a mixture of muscle glycogen and body fat. But just typical sort of fat loss cardio, if you can get it done at first thing in the morning, whether you take a thermogenic or have a coffee, that can just help increase your uh, metabolism. But yeah, I prefer it fasted, get some ab training in without any food in the gut, then eat, get on with your day and uh, move on with your weight training later on in the day. Here's one from uh, Pavel Anthony. He asks, is keeping consistent or short breaks between sets critical? Is it better to start after 90 seconds, knowing that you may not be fully recovered, or wait 30 seconds more and give it your, all you got? So this is all about um, recovery time, rest time after uh, your working sets. 
My thought on this is simple. If you feel recovered enough to go back and you feel that you can commit yourself the same level or more so to that set, then give yourself enough time. This often applies if you're doing the heavier compound set. So early on in my workout, uh, chest for example, with the heavier bench presses and dumbbell flies maybe, I'll allow more than 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute, minute and a half. If I'm lifting heavy, I've depleted my muscle glycogen stores and I feel like I need a little bit more time to recover. So if uh, weight is the main goal, allow yourself enough time to recover to go back and hit that harder. However, there are times, certainly more within my workout, when intensity is my focus. So it's not about how much weight I can lift to recover, it's about keeping that intensity pushed up, in which case, once I've done my set, I'll rest 20, 30 seconds just to get my breathing back down and then I'll go back and hit it again. So with weight being the target, allow enough time for recovery. That could be 90 seconds or more. If it's intensity, especially with circuits or drop sets, recover enough 30, 40 seconds, then, then go back in and, uh, and hit it. So uh, hopefully that gives you an insight into how I uh, set up my training structure. Right, here's an interesting question from uh, Pumpa Zoo. Where do they get these names from? Uh, Rob, as someone who has done a show, I know exactly why I'm not interested in doing another show, at least for the foreseeable future. My question is, as someone who is clearly in great shape, why did you choose to stop competing? I'm just interested to see if your thoughts are the same as mine. Okay, um, so here's the truth behind why I'm not competing anymore. Competing for me was always a personal uh, goal. It was a sense of achievement and I felt I've done that. Also with all of these sort of the, the bigger organizations, I just feel the, the mark for what they're looking for is, is forever changing. People are getting bigger, heavier. It's just, it's really it comes down to it's the goal of what that physique should be is not where I'm looking at my physique to be at. I don't want to get that big. I don't want to hold that much muscle. And um, you know, I, I enjoy training for me. It's a personal thing. I don't want to have a judge or uh, you know, organization tell me how I should look and that's really why I'm not competing anymore. I've achieved what I wanted to do so now fitness for me is just pure passion. I get to enjoy training, eating out, it's a balanced lifestyle. No longer do I have to um, put myself into such a, a disciplinary uh, training routine of diet and cardio purely for the sake of hoping I might pace well at a show. So that's for me my goal why I'm not competing both through the organizations of sort of pushing their requirements further and further, but also I'm happier this way. I'm able to maintain uh, a really good level of conditioning and physique pretty much year round and still find that balance of having fun, eating out, having a drink every now and again, and uh, hence why I'm not doing any more shows. Interesting question here from uh, Tata Malarod. Can I eat breakfast only as one meal a day? Why would you want just one meal a day? Um, okay, here's my thoughts on this. The main thing here is uh, protein turnover, making sure our body has enough, um, basically amino acids that we need to get externally from our diet or from supplementation every three, four hours uh, minimum. This is where bodybuilders typically will only eat every three hours because they need to get that protein in. The reason for that is if you don't consume enough nutrition on a regular basis, your body is going to uh, start to turn to itself to get the essential amino acids, which is where uh, muscle breakdown starts to occur. So I know some people like to eat one big meal a day, but they still have nutrition uh, every three or four hours, either through a smaller meal, a snack, or a protein shake. Breakfast, breakfast is very important, but then you've still got the entire rest of the day where you're active, especially if you're weight training where you still need nutrition. So, whilst breakfast is a, a critical meal, I think you need to get uh, nutrition in first thing in the morning, if that is gonna be your only solid meal, at least have some form of nutrition early afternoon and towards the evening. And if that's just a protein shake, then so be it. But in terms of intermittent fasting, I've always had small, regular, consistent meals spread out throughout the day. That's how I've done it since day one, it's how I've done it through competition, it's how I do it now. It allows my body to absorb um, the right amount of nutrition in small enough um, meals that I can maintain a lean physique. So one meal a day, uh, 
I prefer to spread that out and have small consistent meals every four hours or so, typically 400 calories and get a good balance of protein, some starches, complex carbohydrates and healthy fats. That's worked for me, it's what I recommend to anyone else who asks. Question here from Freddy911. Hey Rob, could you tell us your pre-workout and after workout meal? How much do you need to eat in the morning before your workout and how much after your workout besides the protein shake, obviously, thanks. Um, great question. Carbohydrates for me are really, um, the main time I'll eat them is before and after. This is when my body needs them the most for energy and recovery. So pre-workout will typically be something like um, uh, brown or even white rice with uh, perhaps some steak and some simple fats, avocado, walnuts, and fiber as well. With that, I get a good mixture of complex carbohydrates that's gonna help sustain my energy for two, three hours, and some protein and some healthy fats. That will be about an hour and 90 minutes before because I want my body to be able to digest and absorb. You don't wanna eat and then go straight to the workout 30 minutes because you're not gonna get the benefit from that food. So that's my first meal. Immediately following the workout, yeah, there'll be a protein shake, often with some simple sugars with that, some maldextrose, um, just to give my body that immediate uh, hit of nutrition. It can start with the recovery phase. About 30, 40 minutes later, I'll eat another uh, smaller meal, and this also tends to be more of a moderate source carbohydrate, such as yam, potatoes with uh, a highly absorbable protein source, egg whites, or even a white fish. Not so much fat, but also some fiber as well, which will help slow the um, digestion and release of those carbohydrates for the next hour or two hours. So it's all about immediate energy before the workout, and then some quick energy uh, to get into my body after, followed by a sustained uh, release. And all of this happens within, like I said, 90 minutes before my workout, and then immediately after, and about an hour after that. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. shooting uh, you know, some more content, doing some Q&As, and then uh, we're about to head down to Gold Gym and shoot some more workout features, so uh, stay tuned for more. Next question from Usman to Aziz says, uh, what keeps you hungry even after you've achieved your great goals, and how can you uh, adapt your training after achieving the target body weight? Uh, okay, so look, my motivation now is just to be able to sustain everything I've got going on, my, my training, my nutrition, my balance. Uh, when I first got into it, the competitions was my focus and that, that was a very disciplined, committed um, part of my life. I felt like I put everything aside purely just to focus on that goal of competing. Obviously, once that goal had been achieved, there was kind of nothing I felt to continue to work towards. So my body would change because my my commitment to my cardio, my training, my diet wasn't the same. So now that I'm no longer competing, I feel I can maintain that balance. Um, I find happiness in being able to eat a little bit more of the foods that I want while still maintaining a solid diet, training without the focus of, well, I have to be ready for competition on this date. I'm just training uh, purely because I enjoy that feeling of weight training. Uh, as far as my routine, that doesn't really change. My, my training routine, my approach to training has always been the same. Hit the weights with uh, enough resistance, enough variety, enough angles, and so my body isn't really continuing to change, but I'm maintaining the, the, the balance, the conditioning, the structure. I do feel like I'm getting a little bit more thicker muscle mass, and that's probably because I'm not so focused on cardio and restricting my diet. So for motivation, it's just to uh, to maintain that balance that I was seeking for when I was doing the competitions, but without the deadline and the looming uh, presence of a competition. So it's much more of that equilibrium, uh, and I'm much more happier doing it. This is a question that caught my eye from uh, Livy Frivet. It says, can we live without carbs like bread or wheat and pasta and have one meal only per day? So uh, the question of carbohydrates. Look, I, 
Our body doesn't need them, they're not essential. We can function just fine on um, proteins, fats, those are essential to our uh, health. Our body needs them from our diet and obviously our fiber, vegetation. But wheats, carbohydrates, I've gone without them for a length of time. A little bit harder to kind of uh, find the right foods and diet, but it's definitely maintainable. Certainly if you're getting enough protein that your body can convert into uh, glycogen, the muscle energy. And this question again for uh, one meal per day. I've already answered that, so I'm gonna change this around to uh, basically omitting carbohydrates, but allowing them uh, maybe once a week. This is kind of like a, 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 an extended version of carb cycling where you go with lower or minimal carbohydrates allows your body to start to convert excess proteins, almost go into a state of uh, ketosis. And then when you do add some carbohydrates in, think of it as a, kind of throwing a spanner into the works. It uh, disrupts the metabolism, which can be good because then it creates an influx. The body has to adjust to that again and doesn't become too used to um, a certain nutritional state. So. Look, a little bit of variety is always good. I found that balance is uh, the right kind of key for me. I have some carbohydrates, but like I mentioned, only around workout times. So if you want to go without carbohydrates, A, make sure you're getting enough protein in, enough overall calories. Secondly, uh, include some healthy fats and fiber. And if you do want to have a kind of a carbohydrate cheat day, don't go crazy on it. Lower your fats if you're going to have carbohydrates. So try and stay away from fats at the same time. So protein, and carbohydrates, and then when you're not having carbohydrates, bump up the uh, the fats and the fiber from fre uh, fresh vegetables, greens, lots of leafy, green, dark vegetables, and uh, salads. All right, let's have a look. Uh, question number 10. Here we go, this is from Rakeshaz, and he asks, what is the best type of food to eat to gain muscle mass quickly. Right then, so I wouldn't say that there's one particular type of food. It's not a case of eat this food. It's more about the, uh, the amount of food. And I'd say, look, clean calories are always gonna be better than eating bad food just for the sake of calories. When you're trying to gain weight, you're trying to gain lean muscle mass. That doesn't mean eating as many calories as you can from burgers, pizzas, ice cream, just to get the calories in because the types of calories and how the body um, uses them is still important. So if you can eat clean, you know, the basic rice, potatoes, maybe some pasta, uh, enough chicken, poultry, fish, same type of food that you might look at when you're dieting, but just more of that. Therefore, your body can start to create a surplus of calories and it has enough necessary fuel uh, to be able to repair and support the uh, the training. So, what type of food? Still keep it clean, just more of. And if you struggle to perhaps eat enough food, look at it in the form of shakes. Peanut butter, oats, uh, liquid egg whites that you get in a carton, all of these can help put uh, five, 600 calories into a shake. If you have two of those a day and three or four sort of main solid meals, it's not hard to reach 4,000 calories a day. And beyond that, you don't really need to be eating upwards of five, 6,000 calories a day. That body can then still deem that as too many calories and potentially store it as fat. So to put on weight, it's not just about eating calories overall. It's about being smart with your calories. And I would break your meal times down to every two and a half, three hours and try and get some good, clean nutrition in. Uh, and then of course, the weight training, we're here outside the world famous Gold Gym. The weight training, the type of training and the recovery is really gonna be key to your muscle mass gain. So nutrition is one part of the puzzle. Training, rest, and recovery is the other part. Put them together, give it time, and four, five, six weeks, you should be able to start to see a, a gain and an increase in your overall body weight and your strength. There we have it guys, 10 questions answered. Uh, hopefully I've answered uh, many of the questions that you might have had on your mind and gave you an insight into at least uh, my methodology and understanding for nutrition, training, just general health. I'm here outside a gold gym. This is the most famous gym in the world. I'm gonna head in, start a little shoulder workout, so I'll catch up with you guys later. And as always, you can stay up to date with uh, myself at Rob Richards Fitness and also more of what we're doing behind the scenes at supplementsworld.com. I'll see you guys later, take care.